What's up everybody? Welcome back. Happy brew day. Today we're gonna be doing something just a little bit different. Today's video is gonna be more geared towards the beginner who's never done a kit before. I remember my first time brewing a kit. It wasn't that anything was difficult. It was just that you have your list of instructions that comes with the kit and going through that list is sometimes like a little bit overwhelming because you're going to need something at some point that's not sanitized and you're going to have to run and try to wash it while your boil's coming up and it's better i've found to get organized first and then you can enjoy your brew day okay brew day should be fun right it should be as relaxing and stress-free as possible and like someone, the golf sidekick that I follow on YouTube, t talks people through how to play better golf and how to enjoy it. He said, if you're going to get stressed out there, why not just go to the office? You know, you can get equally stressed. Okay. So essentially, why even do this if it's not fun, if it just creates more work? Okay. So I'm going to talk you through my system today for being able to relax and have a carefree brew day, okay? So this is my system. I've laid out, normally I just do this in checklist form, but I find that if I would have done this my first time, I would have enjoyed the hell out of brew day, okay? You might get through the brew day and you know have your batch of beer that you made and you might've done a great job, but still feel absolutely terrible about the brew day because you were so flustered and now you don't know how your beer is going to turn out because your mind was everywhere. With my system, okay, with the system that I use, if you just follow it step by step, you're going to get through the brew day calmly. Have a couple beers if you need to. You know, relax, don't worry, have a home brew. But you'll get through it and you'll get to the end of the brew day feeling good about the beer you made, okay? And that's worth more than anything. Okay, so what I've done, I've laid everything out on this table. The first thing I did was go through the kit instructions and make a note card for every step. Okay, so step one, I have sanitize. I'm going to sanitize my fermenter, my airlock. Don't forget the scissors for your yeast because you need to sanitize those to be able to cut that at the end. Okay. As you're going through your instructions, you know, making your list of steps, every time you see something that, oh, that, that might need to be sanitized, go ahead and dump it in your sanitizer bucket. So the first thing I do is make up my sanitizer water, as you can see here. And as I come across something on the list of instructions that I need to sanitize, I just drop it into the bucket, okay? So by the time I get to this point, Everything that might need to be sanitized is already in the bucket sanitizing, okay? I know I haven't forgotten anything because I listed it out. Okay, so step one, sanitize. Got my pen here. You know, we go ahead and cross it off the list once we've done it so we don't get lost. I know everything's sanitized. Okay, step two add the LME to a hot sink bath. Okay, your instructions probably won't mention this, but it's a good idea. Everybody I know does it. So the first thing or the second thing we're going to do is run a sink full of hot water and put this in it. So by the time we need it, cuz this is like a thick syrup, like a molasses like substance, you can probably tell. By the time we need this, it's going to be nice and hot and it's going to pour much easier. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get this in the sink bath and we'll come right back. Okay. Just remember these instructions that come with the kit are not set up as a checklist. There's some reading involved and you don't want to be reading during brew day. I mean, I can do it now. Anyone who's done a couple of kits can do it because um, all instructions are pretty much the same. You'll find 
but you don't want to be reading you don't want to be thinking you just want to be doing okay especially if you've never done a kit before okay so lme the hot sink bath we did it so now what we want to do is what's step three add 1.5 gallons of water into the brew kettle full disclosure the kit instruction said add 1.25 gallons of water but i find that with this burner i get a little too much boil off and i have to add you know quite a bit of water at the end if i just add 1.25 i'm just going to add a gallon and a half and it's going to be great okay 1.5 gallons of water into the brew kettle i can do that even if i've had a few beers already that's pretty easy I just rinse this out. It's not sanitized or anything because when the boil comes up, all of this stuff is gonna become sterile, okay? One gallon. For the sake of being exact, I'm gonna measure out the half. So if there's four quarts in a gallon, two quarts of water. Boy, I think the math checked out. Imagine that. Just crossing them off. One step at a time. Okay. What's next? Steep grains and mesh bag for 10 minutes. So I've laid out the ingredients as you can see by each step. So that way I don't have to search for them. I already know where they're at, okay? So I'm gonna steep these in the mesh bag for 10 minutes just as the water heats, okay? So I'm gonna turn the burner on, get the water heating a little bit. All right. I'm gonna let this heat just a little bit for now, okay? Because I don't wanna drop them into cold water, so. It doesn't matter really. One gallon grains for the White House honey ale. It just sounds good. President Obama commissioned some people to do a White House homebrew. They made beer in the White House and this is what they made. I think there's another style they did too, but I think this was the first. First homebrew in the White House, as far as we know, the White House Honey Ale. Okay. So we need to tie the top off, but we want to keep these grains nice and loose so the water can get up in there. So I'm going to tie the knot toward the end. And I'm not going to squeeze these grains or wring them out in there. All I'm going to do is set them in and let it go. All right. So we're not getting any grain sugars out of these grains. In an all grain brew, we mash to convert the starches and the grains to sugars that the yeast can then use to eat and make alcohol. And this, all these little grains are for right here. It adds desired color, flavor, aroma, and body. Or, you know, a little bit of complexity to the finished beer. Okay, so I don't need these instructions because I already laid everything out. It comes with fizz drops, that's for bottling day. I'm not even gonna put those on the table because we don't need them. Okay, this has been in here for a little while already, but we're gonna go ahead and start the 10 minute clock. It doesn't have to be that exact, okay? We're rocking and rolling here. This is how you make beer. This is how you brew up a little kit.
So while that's going, let's talk about the yeast real quick. I have the yeast on the table down here. Step 10, 10 easy steps. I did a little bit of research on this yeast. It says in the kit instructions that this yeast is happiest between 60 and 70 degrees. So that's where we're gonna ferment at. Always do a little bit of research on the yeast you're using and figure out where it likes to ferment, okay? If it gets too hot, you're gonna get some strong flavors in there. If you don't get it warm enough, then it might not fully ferment. So keep it in the range that's suggested for your particular yeast. This just happens to be between 60 and 70 degrees. I have this laying, my yeast right here laying out by step 10, but since I'm brewing outside and it's hot today, I'm just gonna take the yeast back in the house. Okay. Okay. That's our 10 minute timer. Our water has now worked. Or I should say our liquid is now work because it's not just water. Oh yeah, it's always good to have a pair of tongs around. Oh yeah. We got a nice pretty golden color now to our work. Alright. Always good if you're not near the sink to have something handy to put these in when they come out this is another thing that you'd be scrambling for if you didn't think it through okay so when you go through your instructions think of every single item you'll need visualize it make your checklist and you're good okay put the lid back on Okay, so that was step four, steep grains for 10 minutes. On to step five, bring wort to rolling boil. Okay, I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. I had it a little bit low because I didn't wanna scorch those grains on the bottom of the pot. Okay. We'll bring this work to a rolling boil, then we'll cross off step five and we'll go on to step six. This is making beer, folks. In 10 easy steps, the easy way. Because if you're doing it any other way than the easy way, you know, eventually, like I said, once you've made a few kits, you'll be able to read through the instructions. Yeah, I know what they're telling me to do here. And that will become the easy way. But help yourself out at first. And don't set yourself up to have to do a lot of thinking during the brew. Especially if you're drinking a fur brewers. You know what I'm saying? Cheers, guys. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Good to see you back. Okay, so we've reached a gentle rolling boil. Cross step five off the list. On to step six. Once boiling, add LME, which we still have in the sink, and our Kent Golding hops that are right there by the note card. Okay, let me go get the LME real quick. I'm gonna turn this down just a bit. So we've got our gold malt extract. LME because it's a liquid. If your kit said DME, that just stands for dry malt extract. It's more of a powder. Okay, LME is liquid. Dang it. And we're gonna stir as we go. Because if this stuff drops down to the bottom of the boil kettle, it's gonna scorch. So we wanna keep the water moving. I'm gonna put, I have my spoon on the bottom of the kettle and I'm stirring from the bottom. So once the, uh, once the liquid gets down to the bottom, it's being dispersed. It's not just sitting there on the bottom. Oh yeah. Now we've got a darker color. And if you can find a better way to do this next part, do it. But the only thing I've ever done 
to get all of this out is just to dip it. Dip and stir. But that water's hot, so be careful. Maybe put the lid back on. Ooh, ah, ha, woo! Ah. But that's a clean bottle. Hot as a son of a bitch, but it's clean. Still got some LME on my spoon. Okay. Stirring, stirring, stirring. The wort's darker now because we've got all of those extra sugars in there. Okay. Add LME, did it, and our Kent Golding's hops. And stir, it says. Make sure you get them all out. They like to stick sometimes. And the last part of the step says set the clock for 45 minutes. This will be the hardest step of the entire brew day because you have to do multiple things. Okay. 45. So guess what? We can cross off step six. Done. Step seven will just be add these hops when there's 15 minutes left. So until then, you're just babysitting, make sure this thing doesn't boil over, and you're drinking plenty of beer to stay hydrated. Cheers, guys. So this is how stress-free brew day can and should be. I mean, just chilling in the pool, drinking a beer while it boils. I've got 30 minutes, well, less now. I probably have about 20 minutes till my next hop edition but i got the lid you know kind of vented it's not completely on over there it's kind of off to the side so the steam's getting out got a gentle rolling boil so i know i'm not gonna boil over or anything like that so now i'm just chilling cheers guys and gals All right, so I'm almost down to the 15 minute mark here. Gonna go ahead and do step seven since we're right here. Add UK Fuggle Hops. So much for step seven. That's all she wrote. Oh, we got a little fuggle hop left. Okay. Go ahead and cross off step seven. 15 minutes left in the boil. The next step, step eight, is when the time is up, we're going to cut the heat and add the honey. Ooh, so delicious looking. It'd be fun to recreate this recipe from like local ingredients or something, you know, find some local honey. Could be fun. See, once you get the basics down and you don't have to think so much anymore, it feels like someone's shaking your head, thinking about what you're supposed to do next. Once you get the basics down, then you can really start playing. 
like, ooh, maybe next time I'll substitute the honey for molasses. I hate molasses, so I would never do that. But you get what I'm saying. It can be fun, and it should be fun. Must be beer 30. Got 15 minutes to kill. What else am I going to do, right? Cheers. Okay. Time's up. So step eight, let's say cut heat and add honey. Cut the heat. Go ahead and turn the propane off because we're done with it. And now we just have to add some honey. One thing I will mention at this point, sometimes during the boil, the hops tend to kind of boil up on the side. I just kind of monitor it and try to keep those scraped down into the wort as best I can. Because according to my understanding, if the hops are on the side and not in the wort, then they're not being utilized. So I just try to keep them scraped down. This might happen every, you know, 10 minutes or so. They might come up a little bit and I'll have to scrape them back down. No big deal. Okay, so step eight is almost done after I add the honey. Kill the heat. Mm. Summer Blossom Honey Might save this for Old time's sake oh. That's not normal honey Whatever that Summer Blossom is it's very like flowery it's very good so let's add this real quick now i definitely don't want this stuff scorching on the bottom so as i pour it i'm just gonna make sure i keep it stirred like before okay it might become necessary to dip it a little bit, rinse that out. But remember, this is going to be super hot because that wort is very hot. And we got most of it. It'll be good. Stir it in. Heck yeah. Honey beer, honey ale. White House honey ale. Okay. My hands taste like chlorine and honey. Could be worse. Okay, so step eight is done. On to step nine. Almost there, 10 steps. Step nine is cool the wort to 70 to 75 degrees. Okay. Back in the day, I was a little leery to do an ice bath. You know, just putting this in the sink with some ice because I felt like it was taking too long. They say that it can pick up wild yeast, it can get some off flavors the longer it sits out you know after it hits like i forget what temp 75 something once it gets cool enough it can start picking up some nasty stuff so i would sweat it but i'll tell you this fermentation temp is way more important i've messed up some beers by fermenting them too hot like in a 90 degree attic trust me you can take you know 45 minutes to chill down this wort so you can pitch the yeast and it'll be just fine don't sweat it put it in the ice bath and don't just let it sit but keep stirring it around and it'll cool fairly quickly but like i said even if it takes 45 minutes that'll be fine okay i have an immersion chiller So I'm going to use it. 
This works so nice and hot, so I'm gonna drop it in to sterilize it. But it's been sitting in my sanitizer bucket. I've already, you know, scrubbed it down, so it's just fine, okay? And then whatever may be left on it, the uh, the hot wort is gonna kill those bugs, okay? So let's cool the wort to 70, 75 degrees. Then we'll come back for step 10, which is pitch the yeast, okay? Okay, so step nine was cool the wort to 70 to 75 degrees. Cross that off. There's gonna be a snag or two probably, you know? Here's the thing. It's such a hot day today that my groundwater was around 80 degrees. So how are we gonna get this cool to 75? Well. Let me show you what I'm going to do to make up for that. There's always something you can do to make up for stuff. Got the old fermenter here. When I was cooling the beer down, did I notice that maybe there was a little piece of hair or a little piece of fuzz in it? Oh yeah. When I was stirring it around with the immersion chiller, was the thing leaking a little bit and shooting groundwater into my beer? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Do I feel bad about this beer? No. This beer is going to be great. Okay. So just, I wouldn't even say cut your losses because they're not losses. Just realize that it doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to make some good beer. Okay. So, one thing the instructions say is use your auto siphon to get the beer or the wort because I haven't pitched the yeast yet from here into the fermenter. Heck no. Okay. I'm just going to attempt to not pour any trube into this bucket. I will pour some into it on accident, of course, but does it matter? No. Uh-uh. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's pour this in here. Okay, so did I get some trube in the bucket? Yeah, definitely. Did I avoid some pretty nasty hop sediment and all of that in here? Oh yeah. Okay, so I didn't use the auto siphon, but I still kept a lot of the gunk out. While still yielding, you know, a gallon. That's pretty cool. Let's test, let's test the temp again. Cause my theory was that once I poured this wort, this 80 degree wort into the bucket, it had cooled down a little bit during the pouring process. Let's see if that worked. Make sure you sterilize your uh, thermometer. 80 degrees. So we're at 80 degrees still. I'm gonna take this bucket into the kitchen and put it in a cold sink. It's gonna be fine. So using the sink ice bath method, I got the wort chilled down to 76 degrees. I was going for 75 degrees. It's just fine. Like anywhere around that area for an ale will be fine because I'm going to put this in a room that's, I don't know, 68 to 70 degrees. 
so it's going to continue to cool off and the range i'm going to ferment in is 60 to 70 it's actually closer to like 65 to 75 because i did a little bit of research on this yeast so it's already good it's fine okay i'm not gonna sweat it step 10 pitch the yeast guess i need to get it out of the kitchen don't i here's our brew yeast Trying to get it away from the top. Wheat ale yeast. Had my scissors in the sanitizer for a hot minute, so it'll be good. My yeasties, here they go. I'm just gonna spread across the top, okay? And the word, or now it's beer because I pitched the yeast. It loves aeration at first. Once your beer starts fermenting, definitely don't shake your fermenter around, you know. We don't want to get air in it after it starts fermenting. But at this point, it loves aeration or oxygen being introduced to the beer. Oh, yeah. And this is plenty. This is a two gallon bucket. It's plenty past the one gallon mark. So when I go to bottle, whatever tube's down here, I can avoid getting clear down to the tube and still get a gallon yield out of this. So if you have to go a little bit over a gallon or whatever your mark is, it's fine. Your beer might be just a tiny, tiny bit weaker, but to me, that stuff really doesn't matter. I just want a tasty beer. I didn't measure gravity today if you were going to use your hydrometer since it's been sterilizing the whole time this is the point where you could either use a wine thief and get you know some wort some beer in here or just dump your bucket you know and get some beer you can use your hydrometer to measure starting gravity or original gravity and then go ahead and dump it back in after you're done because this is quite a bit of, that's quite a bit of beer to waste and it's been sterilizing the whole time so you could just dump it back if you were testing gravity i would have probably done it before i pitched the yeast so sometime around here don't worry too much about the beer sitting here uncovered it's not really going to hurt anything unless you're just leaving it open and open and open but we've been pretty quick about it, so it's fine. Okay. Lid. Airlock. And that's the brew day. It was easy, it was fun. I think we ought to go ahead and cross off step 10, don't you? So takeaways from today, President Lincoln once said if he had eight hours to chop down a tree, he'd spend six sharpening his ax. So I feel like by making your checklist, by reading the instructions beforehand, you're just setting yourself up for success and for an enjoyable brew day. Okay, don't just fly into brew day on your first time and do what I did. Oh, what's step one? Sanitize, what am I sanitizing? I remember what that was like, dealing with brew day as a beginner, like a first day beginner, and it was not fun. If I would have simply read the instructions beforehand, it would have been way more fun. But if I would have take, taken the time to make a checklist or lay things out like I did today, it would have been a hell of a lot more fun. And then the second takeaway is like with chilling this off, maybe something's always gonna go a little haywire. 
Maybe you find the fuzz in your beer and reach in with your hand without sanitizing first. And you're like, I messed it up. No, you didn't. It's going to be good. Okay. So the main thing is fermentation temp. So I know this yeast likes to ferment between, you know, 65, 75 degrees. I'm going to put it in a 70 degree bedroom. It's going to go for two weeks. And my instructions are going to give me all kinds of crazy stuff about CO2 gas and alcohol. It's going to explain what's happening. Fermentation ends roughly one to two weeks from brew day. When the supply of malt sugars in the wort is depleted, the yeast cells begin to go dormant and sink to the bottom of the fermenter. All I heard was two weeks until I can bottle. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit in the bedroom for a couple weeks. And then I'm going to bottle it. And then it might take a couple more weeks, three weeks to carbonate. And then we'll be drinking some White House Honey Ale. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Way more fun after I mapped everything out. So, use it or lose it. Make your own beer your own way. However you want to do it is fine, okay? Your beer is going to turn out great. And I can't wait to see you next Wednesday. Cheers, guys. Peace.